you can't leave your heart at home, but I possibly could. Um, my pump is like a part of my body. It helps me live, so it's with me everywhere I go. It's kind of like my friend, I guess I should give it a name or something. I have a disease called pulmonary arterial hypertension, and um, I have a pump that pumps a, an experimental drug called remodulin into my body, and that is what is necessary for me to stay alive. There's not a cure. Um, they can only make us feel better. Um, they can never cure us. And some people even become immune to the drug as time goes on. So this drug doesn't work forever and it doesn't work for everyone. I'm trying to push out all the air bubbles so that they don't get into the cassette. So I'm just connecting um, my tubing right now. So basically, I'm just switching pumps to my new medication, and then I um, turn this pump on so that it's running. So this is just trying to get to f the fluid to fill up the tube so that there, there's no air in it. There's something particular about Lauren. Um, although she's shy and quiet, uh, she will say how she feels about things, but you have to pay attention because she'll only say it once. And if you don't hear her the first time, uh, you consider that opportunity gone. I try to listen to her very carefully now um, because what she has to say has a profound impact on me and everybody around her. There go. This pump is on, so this is good to go too. And then I just have to clean everything up. This is a picture of Lauren's heart cap that she had, which says what her pressures are. And uh, this is also like a picture of Lauren's central line where it goes into her chest and straight into her heart, right here. This is Lauren when she was just a little baby. She was always running around with her pearls on. <laughs> oh Lord, pearls in a diaper. That was Lauren. When I was little, I really didn't know there was much wrong with my dad because he was very resilient. He never seemed sick to anyone. Joe was diagnosed with pulmonary hypertension when he was 18. He never really let it get in the way of what he did. He found a way to adapt. It, could this be genetic? And they said, no, it's idiopathic. Um, it happened just, it was, his luck. So no, it never even crossed my mind until I started having symptoms and wondering what it was. And luckily I had a great doctor that said, let's go check it out. He decided that she, in fact, needed a right-sided heart catheterization and she was diagnosed. I was told that life expectancy, I was actually shocked by this because I guess it's hard to hear, was one to five years. Um, without treatment, I was told one to two. Um, but she does have treatment, but I do think that that's a very individual uh, thing for each patient. However, I, Lauren's been sick a really long time. I, she's been sick since she was a little girl, even though we didn't have her diagnosed. And I think that that's played quite a big toll on her body, um, not being oxygenated the way that it need to. So, I mean, I don't know what that's going to do for Lauren's life expectancy. I would hope to think that within her lifetime that we're going to find a cure. And it, it won't be like that. And then typically you have to put the tube in a circle. It's kind of like a stress loop so that if it gets pulled on, um, it doesn't just kind of like rip out. I keep it in my purse all day long. Sometimes I take it off when I go to sleep. It depends how annoyed I am. Um, but yeah, I usually roll up the tubing in my purse 
and just keep it there. People really don't notice if it's in my purse, so. I guess I'm not scared because I feel like there's going to be a time where I'm going to need to be scared and now's not that time. Like, I feel like I'm going to know way beforehand before anything happens. Of course, that's naive and we never know what's going to happen to us, but I feel like now's not the time to be scared for some reason. I can't control what happens to me, only how I respond to it. And so that's the best thing that I can do for myself is be positive. I'm going to nursing school and I'm interested in becoming a remodular nurse for other patients. One thing that happened was I was asleep and I woke up and it untwisted itself. And like I hit a part of my tube and it just dropped off. And so I knew it had become detached. Flicked on the light, looked in the mirror, saw that there was like blood all over my shirt. And from there I got on FaceTime with my doctors. They told me what to do. Um, that's actually happened to me twice. There is fear that if this happens again that it could be worse, fatal, which is why I wanted my dog. Decided to get my service dog because I'm going to a dorm, I'm going to be alone with all my medical equipment, and so I thought as a safety precaution I wanted a dog to wake me up. So that's why I got Ruby, it's because of that whole bleeding situation. And there's usually like a long waiting list, it's usually like three to five years and then it costs you like $35,000. I have a trainer that trains me to train my dog. So that was the quickest way for me to get a service dog. This is $15,000. I use about four of these a month. Um, and then I have other oral drugs. This one is $10,000 a bottle. I'm not sure how many I use a month. I think one or two. I'm very fortunate to have California Child Care Services that covers the medical costs right now. Um, however, when I turn 21, that's kind of all up in the air. A lot of people get grants for their medications because insurance won't cover them. It's so much money because it's a very rare disease, so the drug companies are not gonna make a whole lot of money on it because they have a very small control group of people that they sell it to. They can get away with selling it for that much, and they do. In order to cure my daughters, you're going to have to find a cure for the genetic mutation, which takes research and funding. If there's a cure out there, I believe that she can walk through it and stand for that. So I think that she has that warrior spirit inside of her, just like her father did. I believe that she'll be at the forefront of research, clinical trials, and therapies. And I think she works really, really hard on it. Um, accepting things. I mean, it's not perfect. You know, we all have our really bad days and our really down days about it. Um, but I think on a whole, it's a strange thing to say, but I think she's embraced it. A lot of people push things into the future like, oh, I'll get to it eventually, like I'll learn to do this eventually. But for me, it's like, if I want to learn to do something, like now's the time to do it. And I do it now. I think that's a great thing because even if I live a long time, like then I would have done all these amazing things, right? Because I didn't do it without inhibitions. And um, I think everyone should live that way, not just people who may have a shorter lifespan. Because then we'd have awesome lives. Not being afraid of what people think of us would be great. <laughs>